uh, second machine age is coming and it will have a significant impact on the type of leaders that we need in the future. Now, before getting into that, on what are those leadership capabilities uh, that we will require, uh, maybe just two minutes about that second machine age. What is it all about? Uh, I think we all saw the age of uh, e-commerce and, and what it did to the traditional uh, brick and mortar organizations. Now, that second mis machine age goes one step further and actually is going to look at how to automate actually today very cognitive and, and human intensive processes and activities within an organization. Plenty of examples already out there. Uh, driverless cars will have extremely disruptive impact on the whole taxi and, and, and actually industry. Uh, we see driverless trucks will have profound impact in how supply chains are being managed and, and how uh, organizations uh, operate at. Um, there's plenty of studies. Uh, Deloitte uh, recently did some, uh, did some insight into what kind of jobs will be automated. And there are some industries like retail where up to 40% of the jobs will be automated in the next five years. So, so we see something coming across industry that is extremely disruptive. And, and if we thought once again that e-commerce was a big revolution, what we're going to see in the next five years is going to be 10 times in terms of impact, in terms of complexity, in terms of just how the workforce is organized, uh, what, what it's going to be. Now, um, as a leader, this has profound impact on your organization. And it has impact on, first of all, how you set up your organization and how you embed digitization within your organization, first point. Second point, it has a profound impact on how you're going to manage talent going further. And third, it's going to profoundly impact the kind of skills that you need as a leader within the company. Let's look at these points now a bit one by one. So first of all, an impact in the organization. Um, we already see today a kind of maturity model arising that looks at how companies get around digitization. And at the two extremes, and I think that's most interesting, on the one hand, we see companies where the digital agenda is actually run by an isolated team that provides services to the complete company. So it's actually not embedded within the company. It's like any other project. Those are companies that actually don't live digitization. They have a project team that tries to apply it to the company. On the other extremes, and there are plenty of examples, eh? all the dot-coms uh, fall into that category, we have companies that have completely embedded digitization in each and every process within that company. Um, and they actually it get all of the benefits of, of doing that. So one, uh, one area already to look at is, is how do you embed this in your core functions within, uh, within your company. Second uh, impact that a leader should be aware of is how it will impact talent within a company. Uh, I just said that some industries up to 40% up to of the jobs will be automated going forward. Um, so that has, of course, impact on the, the composition of your talent, which kind of talent that you want to retain in your company, and also which uh, talent is going to be impacted by that wave of automation that is coming up and digitization that is coming up. So creating, on the one hand, a symbiosis between human and automated systems uh, will be a first challenge in there. Uh, a second one in there is in the kind of uh, models or engagement that you have with people and with employees going forward. Uh, I know today already uh, organizations where up to 50% of the employees have a non-traditional contract with the company. Yeah? So it's based on temporary workers, it's based on contractors, uh, sometimes even based on volunteers. Uh, they're, they're whole industries. Uh, Linux is a fantastic example. It's a whole industry that is purely based on volunteering work. Can you imagine that you operate a company like that? Yeah. So very disruptive things are going to happen in how I find talent and how I incorporate the human beings in, in my company. And then the third topic is around you as a leader. Uh, what is the impact in your skills and what will you need going forward in terms of critical skills to fully benefit of that revolution, which is digitization that is coming up? First and foremost, 
is that you will need obviously your leadership skills. I think if you look at companies like Facebook, like Google, uh, plenty of examples, like Tesla, we all see companies, Amazon another example, companies with a very inspiring and energizing leader. And that person, first of all, is a good leader. So has all the traditional leadership skills, yeah? which, which is things like being able to clarify the roles, have an advisory role, so not a, a dictator kind of uh, ordering role in the organization, actually uh, being able to manage uh, handovers, uh, focus on outcome rather than on inputs or on operations. So they have all the right behavior. But on top of that, that, they show all the right things that actually made them successful in that digital world. And what are those? It's things like, well, first of all, obviously making a best possible use of technology to manage teams, but also to manage contact with the workforce. Uh, I think that a truly digital leader doesn't send out even emails anymore. He's present on social media, on internal digital channels within the organization. He, like a bit like we see here today, uh, he, he publishes videos uh, that, that the people can use that are inspiring to that workforce. So he uses all the channels that are today available, and there may be even hundreds of them, you know, to actually get messages and to inspire people and engage people. Um, it's also a person that can manage very dispersed and remote teams. What we see even accelerated is globalization. And, and so be able to do that as, as a digital leader, you need to be comfortable by, by managing talent and teams that are completely spread over the globe. Yeah? Um, need to be comfortable with matrix organizations. Uh, organizations become uh, really are moving and are becoming increasingly complex. So they're moving from a very pyramid kind of hierarchy organization to a network of different teams. So how do I navigate that? How do I inspire those different teams? Needs to be able to inspire knowledge sharing. Uh, and, and I know for a fact companies like Tesla, uh, like Facebook, spend enormous amounts in the area of knowledge sharing, being open, sharing information, uh, making these things public, and as a leader being comfortable with that in what can you share and what you can't share. So actually plenty of skills uh, to build up. Um, um, I think a big challenge that is ahead, and this thing is coming, if we want it or not, it's like e-commerce. It will hit you and it will hit your industry. Um, I think up to 12 critical skills to develop from a leadership perspective. So I think very, very engaging and it's actually very interesting if you take up the challenge yourself.